Okay, we continue our lecture about Android yeah? uh, in second week, uh, in the first session, we are going to introduce to you the Android work environment. Okay, so following topics will be given to you, including the native and versus hybrid, how to set up proxy in case you work in Ubaya, yeah? and then how to create new project, and how to run emulator and using your real device troubleshooting and also explanation about project structure and user interface okay uh, before we move on into the android studio stuff i'm going to talk about native versus hybrids what is that okay uh, when you develop an app there's a two ways to actual uh, uh, methods to develop an applications one is native and second one is hybrid so what is native native app is a software or applications that is developed for use on particular platform or device and use specific language specific programming language for example if you want to develop and publish your app in play stores you need an um, android studio as the developer package and also you have to understand the kotlin or java language in either i mean in other cases if you plan to upload your application to app store you need to work with xcode a development package for ios and also you have to understand the swift language or objective c language okay the the good things about native i mean the advantages about native is it's uh it has it offers high performance because um, the language and the specific uh development packets is built around the the devices i mean it's built based on the devices so uh, when you launch the application, it uses the real performance of the, uh, the devices. There is no bridging or third-party library that uh, uh, can reduce the performance of, of the applications. In other methods, is a hybrid mobile apps. It's the one that combines elements of both native and web applications using web technology like uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and web service, and so on. So um, it means that you create a website that looks like it has aesthetic and feel and behavior looks like a native application, but actually it's only CSS. It's only HTML and uh, thanks to the JavaScript that make everything all like looks like a native way. So the example of framework that using hybrid methods is a, a framework 7 annular ionic react native or react here yeah, uh, which is developed by facebook okay and then we need special tools to envelop everything into an application that somehow eventually you can install it in your smartphones it's called wrapper and one of the famous wrapper is phone gap or cordova okay so uh, in in this case a hybrid you will you will learn how to develop application faster quick yeah so the advantages of hybrid is is very quick it's quite cheap when you want to develop or testing you out your ideas but the disadvantages of hybrid is it's low performance i mean it's not good as the native performance because there's a bridging library that render everything inside the web view a web view component it looks like a browser inside browser in your application but i mean is it's actually run a browser when you try to launch the application hybrid applications it will launch a, 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 a inside browser and then display your application so it there's, there's several steps to render the, the image on the screen. So these steps require more resources. Therefore, the, the performance is not comparable. 
is not high as uh, the native okay in this lecture we focus on the how to develop native using app android studio so in um in in the google official website you can download the android studio it's around i mean i think uh, the latest version is 4.0.1 yeah you can check that out so what is android studio is this is the official integrated development environment or ide and it's always became the first tools to work with android native i mean in last five or ten years it, it developed from uh, a first version and until the fourth version until today and the good things about android studio it's quite uh quite good yeah it's it's stable and then it's uh, uh it has less bug compared to other ide and also it's available on many major operating system you can download for linux windows and also for mac okay so this is the system requirements so at least you have eight gigabyte ram yeah please uh, if you want to work with emulator, this is the minimum requirement. Yeah, the eight gigabyte RAMs. Okay, and then don't work with four gigabyte RAM. Yeah, unless you doesn't work, want to launch it in emulator, and you use the real device, you still okay use four gigabyte RAM. Okay, so that this is a, the system requirement. But please check the website for the the latest update of system requirement. Okay. Uh, you can download the latest Android installer in this website and follow the instruction until complete. It's around 800 megabytes. But you can you, after after you done installing Android Studio, uh, it asks you to download some more files. It's called SDK. Yeah. So it, it needs to download uh, more more bigger size files around two gigabyte or one gigabyte. Yeah. And then wait until it's done. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you quick about proxy setting. Unless uh, you are you are working at home, right? Now, right? So you don't need this information actually, but I will show you uh, somehow. Okay. So this is uh, how you set up the proxy setting when you work in Ubaya's lab. So when you launch the Android Studio at first time, you're going to see something like this, and then you need to specify the information of proxy like the host name, port number, and so on and so on. Okay, now let's try to create new project. Okay, before I show you how to, to create new project, you have to understand several things. Uh, this is the app building native mobile app workflow. So you begin with set up your environment. You set up the proxy, you set up the directory and so on. You install everything. And then after you that, after that, you create a project. And then you start to write the codes, you add an assets, image, sounds, and other assets as well. And then you test it, either connect to the device or emulator. And then you customize your build means that uh, you tweak something in your application that works well on different smartphone, yeah, different devices. And then you have to debug it, you have to test it and so on and so on. You're doing this iteration um, more than one times and then when you're done when you feel it's it's final it's it's okay it's good and then you can publish to the play store and, it, and then you have to set a version number of your applications somehow in in the future you want to update you have to you have to change the version number increase the number by once and then you have to digitalize signs uh, because every applications in in order to list it on the Google Play Store, you have to add a digital signature for your applications. Okay, I will talk about that more later. Um, let's see the the first thing you see on on Android Studio. If you see here uh, on the left screen is the list of the list of applications, yeah, previous application that you load up. So it will it will list it here, and you can quickly open the, the the previous project that you create. 
Okay, but um, I don't want to do that. I want to create a new project. So you can close your current project that that already open. Okay. Okay. Now click to start a new Android Studio project here, right? And then you will see the project template, and actually it looks like this. Like this, there's several templates that you can choose. But for now, please select the empty activity. Unless you under you already understand the concept and how to create. The applications you can select any any that you need it but for now please select the empty activity press next button and then after you've done that you need to uh, add some some informations first you have to add the application names let's try with the hello app hello app yeah and then you can change the package name. The default one is com example dot uh, the application name. So remember this: if you plan to publish it in Play Store, don't use the default package like com dot example. Don't use that. You have to change that because Play Store will prohibit application that still use the default package name, and eventually your application files will be rejected. Okay, but if you Mistakenly use example.com and do not, you don't know how to change that. You can follow these links to display to show you information how to rename your package. Okay. And we going next. Safe location is where where the directory locations for these projects and the language you can select between Kotlin and Java. Obviously, we pick we pick Kotlin. And then for the minimum SDK, SDK stands for Software Development Kit. It's a kind of library, a kind of files, softwares, library and files, that or tools that helps you, uh, give you several access to uh, Android uh, applications uh, development uh, software. So using this SDK, you can develop Android applications. So you can pick which API level that you want but remember, if you uh, pick the high number application uh, API number like this, you will see that information here, your app will run on approximately 39.5% of the device. It means in this world, only 39.5% populations is use Android Pie. So if you want to target more user, you have to pick lowest lower number. Okay, you have to pick lower number. So for example, KitKat. It's con I think it's considerably low, 74%. Or Lollipop, uh, you can choose any, any API, it doesn't matter. Because um, if you choose Android KitKat and Jelly Bean user, yeah, it cannot install your applications. But above, above KitKat, it's okay, yeah. No error when installed the application. So it's indicated uh, which minimum API versions of the user that can install your applications. You have to uh, uh, put in your mind that more number, highest number, offer offer more advantages, more features. Lower number offer less features. You have to remember that. So uh, do I have to pick higher number? It all depends on your your uh, your goals. Okay. So for now, I want to my application to be installed it in many devices as possible. So I pick lowest number like KitKat here, or I can go lower like 16 Jelly Bean. But I don't. I think I can use this one. Okay. And then um, just press finish button when you've done that. Okay, finish. All right. Yeah, I already I already explained that. Um, in previous Android versions, it used old supporting library that that can develop application or activity that works well on previous API level, but it's now become obsolete and Android Studio use Android X package or library that can actually handle that uh, uh, 
uh, old Android devices in your applications. Okay. So when it asks you about proxy, please check check tick this mark. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Now important when you create a new at first time you create a new project, the Android Studio will start gradling process. Looks like this. What is this? It's download the, the necessary library from the repository and you have to wait it until it's done okay it quite takes some times yeah around 15 minutes 5 or 15 minutes to 15 minutes uh, especially if you work with new android project and for the second project it will the time will be shorter than than the first project okay so please wait until it's done i'm going back later but most importantly you have to patiently wait until it finished don't do uh, anything 